Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and this is part 5 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In this video, we are going to discuss and explore the copy activity within Azure Data Factory. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos, I would highly recommend to watch those videos before watching this one, as we have already discussed what is Azure Data Factory, its key components, and we did create our own Azure Data Factory with free Azure account. So let's get started with copy activity. Now, before proceeding further, I would uh, you know suggest that this video is going to be in two parts. Let's understand why. All right, so what we are going to do is we are going to create a copy activity. So let's say it's a copy activity and we will create a file on the blog. And what we will try to do is we will copy that file from the blog and then we will try to copy it on the SQL. Okay, now as we discussed earlier in the previous video, each copy activity will require two different elements one would be nothing but the linked service that will have the connection details to the blog and another one would be data sets data sets nothing but which will be pointing directly to that particular file which will be saved on the blog now similarly when it comes to loading data into the destination we will require a linked service that will be having nothing but the connection details to the sql and similarly a data set that will point to the directly table in the SQL server where we will be copying this particular data. So now because this copy activity involves these many configurations and we don't have as of now any blob or SQL storage created. So in this video part one, first we will create a blob storage and then we will create a SQL server and then we will go ahead and configure the copy activity in the next video and we will see how we can execute it and how can we monitor the copy activity all right so let's get started with creating the blob storage first all right in order to create a storage account first we will come on to the azure home page then we will click on the storage account uh, let's click on the shortcut now here because we don't have any storage account created as of now it's blank i'll just go ahead and click on create the moment we'll click on create it will ask for the similar kind of details uh, which we entered while creating our azure data factory so i'll quickly fill this information so for resource group i'll use our rg underscore ade the storage name maybe i'll say ade demo storage region i'll keep it uh, asia pacific and make it standard redundancy maybe i'll because making it for the demo i'll keep it uh, lrs local redundant storage go to this next mm, let's keep the default information now this is very important feature here uh when we are creating a storage account if we are not checking or we are not enabling the hierarchical namespace then it is going to be a normal or data like st uh, normal storage account However, if we are going to check this option and we are enabling the hierarchical namespace, then this storage account will be treated as data lake storage. And we can you know, leverage all the features which we will get in, as a part of creating data lake storage. So I'll just check this one and then leave the options default and go to the networking. Again, I'll leave the options default. Let's review and Azure is running some validations, whether information is provided or valid or not, then I'll go ahead and click on create. All right, so we'll just let's wait for a few seconds while deployment is in progress. All right, our storage account is created. Now I can go ahead and click on go to resource. Now, once we'll go click on that, we will be navigated to this particular page. If we click on container, then just wait now here by default you will see a container created as a logs uh, we don't need to do anything with that i'll just go ahead and create a new container so let's say test data test data oh it name content should be lowercase only so i'll just say test data and it on create now don't confuse what is a container considered just a high level of folder 
now within this container itself we can create more directory and add subfolders but container is always uh, you know superior level of uh, folder within a blob storage now what i will do is within this particular container i will upload a file so let me just all right hit open and uh, let's click on upload okay so a particular file is now available on the blob storage that we will be using in azure data factory to copy it from here and then we will eventually push this into a sql server as a table now as a next step we will go ahead and create our sql server within azure so let's get started with that all right so in order to create a sql server i'll go on the azure portal homepage again and look for sql I will click on SQL database and hit on create. Now, because I'm still using free trial account, by default subscription will be selected as free trial. I'll select the resource group, RG underscore AD that I created in the beginning. For database name, maybe I can give a name as ADE demo DB. Now, because I don't have any server as of now, I'll just go ahead and click on create a new server. Just create my own server here. I'll say ADE demo dash server. I'll change its location. It's completely option, optional. And for authentication, I'll create a username and provide a strong password. Okay, that's done. I'll just hit okay. And cool. Now uh, I'll just keep some default options here while creating this SQL database, but let's quickly check what are the options. So whatever compute and storage I'm going to get as a part of this SQL Server and database, that would be standard series Gen 5, one B core and 32 GBs of storage with geo redundant disabled. Now I'll just go ahead and, okay, before going on next, we can see based on whatever configuration that I have given, it has provided an estimated cost and it is going to, you know, charge 428 uh, rupees um, in Indian currency. Now, because it's a free trial, I don't need to worry about this one. I'll just click on next as a networking. Now here networking under connectivity method by default, it says no access just for the, you know, security things. But for now I'll switch back to you know, public endpoint and let's move to the security. Uh, I don't want to, you know, start the trial of defender. I'll keep the default options, additional security. Let's keep them default tags, leave them blank. And finally I'll hit on a review and create and now let's wait for a couple of more seconds while this deployment is in progress all right so our deployment is completed and our sql server is now created within azure now if you click on that go to resource option now you will be able to navigate it to this particular screen which is nothing but the details of our all the details of our sql server that we just created you can click on query editor preview here it will ask for your login credentials that we provided while creating the sql server and from here you will be able to login in now one important notification or one important thing that you need to know here is most of the time while creating or or while logging in with for the very first time over here you you might get some error message that this particular IP from which you are trying to access the SQL is not allowed to access and you will get some error message. So in order to fix that, what you can do is go on overview page, uh, just click OK, go on the overview page, select this particular server in which we are going to access that database. Under that server, go into the network, under the security, click on networking. Now under networking, if you scroll down, here you will see some firewall rules. In this particular firewall rules, you need to add your current IP address. This is the IP address of the machine from which you are going to access that database. So just hit save and come back to that query editor. For example, I can again click on, uh, okay. I can again click on query editor and login and it will work. So I'll just log in again and show you guys. So right now you can see now at this point of time, there is no tables or no waves or no stored procedures are created because we just created this Azure SQL database. 
All right, so before go ahead and start configuring the copy activity, there is one more important thing we need to do is, as we discussed in this particular image, we need to have a you know, link service, we need to have a data set on the both side. So for this one, we have already got a file on the blog and we will be able to create a connection and point to that particular file that we have already uploaded on the blog. Now here we, we have got a SQL server created and we will be able to create a link service. But in order to create a data set, we need a actual table that, that should be there in the SQL in which we will be able to copy that data from blog to that table. So I have already got a copy, I have already got a create script. So I'll just go back to the SQL server and based on whatever sales or whatever sample sales data we have got in the Excel file that we have uploaded on the blog, I have created a table with the same column names. So I'll just go ahead and execute this create table statement and it has created a table. I'll let's just test, select so star from and uh, we have got this table created now in our next our next step is to go ahead and configure the copy activity all right guys that's it for the part one of exploring the copy activity as a part of part five of this azure data factory tutorial series so in this video, we created our own blob storage and we uploaded an Excel file or CSV file into that. Then we created a SQL server and created a table inside that. In next part of exploring copy activity video, we are going to configure the copy activity and then we will see how can we execute and perform the data movement from blob to SQL server. I hope you like the content. Please go ahead and hit the like button and do subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.